the roads and the trails in each type of geography that we overlanders pass through have their unique challenges. Rocky mountainous terrain, steep slippery slopes, water crossings, and in the forest there's always the fallen trees that can make roads impassable. If you spend any appreciable amount of time overlanding through forests, you're bound to come upon a fallen tree in your path. In this episode, we're going to take a look at five of my most recent encounters with fallen trees and take a look at the clearance method and gear that I used for each. So it's bound to happen sooner or later. You come around the bend and there in front of you is a tree right across the road. You have to make an assessment as you approach and think about the gear that you have and what's the quickest, safest, and easiest way to eliminate the obstacle. Now in this case, this is a small diameter pine tree that just snapped off right at the edge of the trail, or the road. So I figured we could use a chainsaw that I keep in the bed of the gladiator and a little bit of muscle. Had a couple of my overlanding buddies with me. And so the muscle was uh, readily available. I thought I could do it with one cut at the top, take the canopy off, and then just slide it. But I took one grab tried to lift and decided, you know what, another minute, I can make a, another cut and slide it out of the way or roll it out of the way and not risk injury to my back or anything else. Now that's an 18 inch blade on the chainsaw, but again, I don't want to run it into the dirt, so I stopped short of cutting through, thinking I could snap it. Which proved not true. Maybe because it was a uh, fresh tree. And so we finished off the cut, it was much easier to slide out of the way. Okay, we got another train. That's a big train. So, after surveying the situation, we decided that the best way to remove this 18 inch to 20 inch diameter maple from the road was to use the winch with a 90 degree angle. First thing to do was to position the jeep. be directly across from the fulcum tree that would create the angle. <clears throat> Using a snatch block and a 
the tree saver, of course. I put the winch line, which in this case is a steel line. Attaching it directly to the object tree using another tree saver strap to make it easy to loop around. And of course, in this situation, in any winch situation, you always should use the dampener directly in front of the winch between the tree, the object, and the winch itself. So you can see, I've pointed out here the snatch block, the winch, the tree saver, the dampener, and then the pull strap. need to do is create enough room to get the vehicles through. Yeah, I got it. We're good. So in this scenario, we're faced with quite a large diameter tri-rotted cedar and we figured the likelihood would be that it would break so we decided to use the 90 degree method but this time with a strap instead of the winch on the Jeep. The reason being, we could apply force gradually and at different levels than just stop and go. But also, the uh, winch requires maintenance after you use it. You've got to re-roll it, you've got to then clean it as soon as possible, the rope that is, as soon as possible, uh, so that it does not uh, degrade in the winch roll. So you have to think of those types of things as well when you're choosing your recovery method. Now we knew if we were going to use the tree in the right, on the right, as the fulcrum tree, we were gonna need Put two straps together. Here what we're doing is using a soft shackle to attach the yellow strap and the white strap. At that point, it's just a matter of bringing the strap around the fulcrum tree and then attaching it to the hard shackle on the front bumper of the Gladiator. The attaching of a, of a 
strap to a hard shackle takes longer because of the fact that you need to unscrew the pin of this shackle, pull it from the, the uh, attach point on the bumper, thread the strap through, you get the idea. So here's a diagram of where the pull strap number one is, the chainsaw cut that we had made, the soft shackle that attached the two straps, and the strap to the hard shackle on the bumper. Now you can see we can adjust the, the, the speed and the uh, uh, tension and the power of pull, the pull power. And as we figured, the log broke in two, but now we're dealing with the remainder that's on the road is just something we can use a little muscle in our feet to uh, move out of the way. So here is the combined hazard of quite a large pitch pine having fallen across the road in an 18 inch deep puddle. So what we're figuring out here is that the hard shackle that we want to connect the strap to, the bolt connecting it to the bumper, is frozen. Now let this be a lesson to everyone that conventional wisdom says you should, when you tighten that bolt to put the shackle back on, you should back it off a turn to prevent exactly what we're experiencing here. But our remedy was for Bob to go get a soft shackle. So we attached the soft shackle to the strap and put the soft shackle through the hard shackle on the bumper. Now it's time to go see if what we are attempting to do with this strap is going to work. Now we had put a small half cut with a tree saw just to the left of the strap. And slowly you can see here there's a half cut the strap directly to the shackles. It didn't break at the saw cut. It snapped to the right of the strap. 
So now we've got to remove the rest of the log, if you will, from the puddle. So now it's time to remove the strap from the first attach point and replace it onto the remaining portion of the log that's in the water now. Could get messy. You need sure footing here. couldn't really see the bottom of the log. It was a little bit heavy, but I was able to yank it up enough to get the strap looped over it, push it far enough along to where it wouldn't slide as the Jeep pulled. couldn't let it float in the water, had to pull it up onto the shore.
Okay, so another obstacle. That is a giant multi branch trunk, whatever, uh, pine tree, a fresh pine tree, a healthy pine tree. Come right down. I'm a quarter mile from the exit of the forest here to the pavement. And now I've got to back the Geo Pro up because we're headed to the next destination. And I got to back the Geo Pro up I, at least 200 yards be on this dirt, narrow dirt road before I can get something I may be able to turn around in. Ha. <laughs> So I think we're going to wrap this up and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did give us a like and hit that subscribe button. Stella and I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.